Right, now you're sure you know how to play this? Of course I know how to play it. Bags, I go first. Where's the dice? There's no dice. You don't play this with dice. Well, how am I going to get to buy Mayfair and Park Lane? Dad, it's a card game. We are not playing Monopoly. Why not? I like Monopoly. I want to play Monopoly. Where's the Monopoly set? You chucked it in the incinerator. <laughs> when? When you lost. <laughs> Didn't lose. The wog cheated. I cheated? Who was the one who reckoned he could tunnel out of jail? <laughs> Nothing in the rules against it. Dear, in one move you bought King's Cross Station, then magically your little battleship shot across the board to Liverpool Street. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't cheat, how'd you manage that? I went by train. <laughs> Nothing in the rules against that either. All right, right. Speaking of the rules then, you still owe me four and a half grand for parking your battleship on Mayfair with a hotel. I didn't park, I stalled. <laughs> how can you stall a battleship? My foot slipped off the clutch. <laughs> Besides, it wasn't my fault. I had to stop outside the hotel. Why? Oh, my first mate wanted to go to the toilet. Oh, this is just ridiculous. Ridiculous? Just you try going to sea for three months and crossing your legs. <laughs> it's murder with all that water slapping against the sides. You don't think they all do that sailor's jig for fun, do you? You're mad, Ted. Come on, Greek. Let's go home. Now, Bruno, fair's fair. I had to put up with your father last night. What's wrong with my old man? At least he doesn't reckon sailors dance the jig because there's no dunny on board. No, but he tried to tell me that Leonardo da Vinci invented television so he wouldn't have to talk to his wife. Pretty cluey bloke, da Vinci. <laughs> For a walk. You didn't tell me the old man said that. I did, but you were watching television. Hmm. Dear, what I don't understand is, seeing as how they cost so much, why couldn't they put a toilet in it? <laughs> Are you mad, woman? Why would they put a toilet inside a television set? <laughs> Everybody would see you doing it. <laughs> For the dancing sailors. What dancing sailors? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Mrs B, take it from me. Battleships these days do have toilets. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> Especially for the sailors. Are we going to play cards or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. well, can we get on with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's deal? I've already dealt. Oh, well, just a minute. I've been cheated. Someone's got more than I have. <laughs> that's the pack. Oh. Now, you're sure you know how to play gin rummy? Of course I know how to play it. I nearly invented it. I used to play it that was running out of my ears. Don't you worry about it, mate. You just look after yourself. Righto, righto. Here we go, then. Yeah, right up. <laughs> so what are you doing? Nothing. You're cheating. Oh, I am not. You are. I'm going to tell on you. He's cheating. I'm not. It's my house and I'll look anywhere. Stop it, will you two? Stop your bickering. You're like two children. I'm not. Anyway, he started it. Didn't. Did. 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 Stop it! <laughs> Did Bruno, no more squabbling. No more. Plenty of time after the fun. So let's get the fun over and done with while we're all in a good mood. All right? Yeah. Promise, Bruno? Yeah, all right. Ted? Don't have to if I don't want to. Ted? Yeah, all right. You start, Bruno. Right. <laughs> Your go, Tettles. You finished? Yeah. You... You don't want that one? No. You sure? Yeah. I mean, you can change your mind if you want. I don't mind first time round. I don't want to change my mind. <laughs> Oh, don't say I didn't warn you. Oh, this is too easy. Snap! <laughs> what are you doing? I'm playing cards. I just got two jacks. They're mine. I was quickest. Snap! Dad, we're not playing snap! Why not? Because we're playing bloody gin! <laughs> don't shout at me. It's gin rummy. Remember, you played it for weeks with that waiter during our honeymoon. That's why we had to hitchhike home. Well, I don't want to talk about it. R remember now. We we're not playing snap. When you win, you say gin. Yeah. Take one of the jacks, back. All right, right up. Yeah. You have a game, Mrs B. All right. Oh, um, mm, uh, oh. I haven't got anything. Oh, just my luck. Beauty. Okay, Tettles. Gin, I win, you lose, I'm the king of the castle. Righto, that's it. I'm not playing anymore. You're bloody mad, Tettles. Come on, Greek. What's the matter with you, you bad loser or something? How can I lose when I'm playing gin and you're playing snap? <laughs> 
Gin, Snap, Dominoes, they're all the same to me. How come? I only learned one game when I was a boy. Oh, you know. shut up. Watch it. Oh, saved by the bell. Now, Bruno, calm down. Well, you drives me crazy. You can't win, you can't lose. All you can do is go out of your mind. God, it's hard being in this family. You're lucky to have a family. When I was a boy, my parents were too poor to have a family. <laughs> well, what does that make you, then? Oh, gotcha. At last. I win, you lose, and I'm going home to my castle. Come on, Greek. Ted, that was a man with a telegram. And what do you want? He wanted to deliver it. Oh. <laughs> what did it say? No, do you want to open it? Oh, no, is it the pools? Uh, no. Lotto, is it Lotto? No. Million dollar lottery? No. Oh, well, chuck it away then. <laughs> no, Ted, someone's got to open it, and I don't want to open it because it's bound to be bad news. Then again, it might be from the Queen thanking me for her birthday card. <laughs> Give it to I'll open it. And what does it say? Hang on, hang on. Regret to advise your Uncle Jack has passed away. Stop. We'll visit and explain in full stop. Arriving tomorrow by bus stop. Clary Vernon. Oh, poor old Uncle Jack. Well, 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 well. Who'd have thought it? Dead at 97. <laughs> well, well, you wouldn't read about it. Poor old Uncle Jack Bullpit dead. Oh, well, that's another funeral we've got to fork out for. Mum, I never met him. Oh, you wouldn't have, dear. He was an uncle of Ted's, always out in the bush. Sort of a prospector, I think. We had a letter from him a few years ago. Just a minute. There was a key that came with that letter and a note saying, hang on to this key after I've gone because then you'll be rich. <gasps> Pickle me, grandmother, I'm a millionaire. Good on you, Uncle Jack. Oh, hello, dear. How was your day? Bloody shambles, of course. Someone should blow young talent time up. Dear, what's happened now? I'm standing on the station and I get this feeling I'm being watched. And I look around and there, larger than life, is Johnny Young and his mob of midget Liberacis leering at me from this poster on the wall. Oh, dear, what did you do? Only thing I could possibly do. What? Drew a moustache and glasses on them all. Oh, gee, that's terrible. Of course it's terrible. The station master caught me and confiscated me texture cup. <laughs> G'day, Dad. Yeah. Where's my paper? In the lounge room. Oh, what are you doing? Nothing. Uh, that'd be right. <laughs> Typical bludging university student. Dad, I am not bludging at uni. I am... Oh, bull! You smart-ass university medical students are all the same. You spend years hanging around and all you learn to do is write aspro in Latin. <laughs> Why don't you learn to do something good for society? Like what? Like helping your mother open the door. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bloody kids, give them a face full of pimples. They think they own the world. <laughs> Ted, Ted, how are you, mate? You haven't changed a bit. Remember me, Clary Vernon? Uh, no. Of course you do. I met you a few years ago with your Uncle Jack. You know, when you bailed us out of the Hooskow in, in Rockhampton. Oh, no, no, I'm Craig. Oh. Good day. Good day, mate. Who's the old bloke? Oh, that's Ted. I'm Craig, his son. Ted Bullpit? Yeah. Him? Mm. Bloody hell. <laughs> what happened to you? I mean, you used to be young and good-looking like him. It's a long time ago, Clary. You see what living in town does to you? <laughs> a man gets old before his time, just dodging all the traffic and keeping away from the crims in the cross. Crims? What crims? Don't tell me you haven't noticed. They've knocked off all the trams. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, what have they done with the end of Circular Quay? Oh, what do you mean? Who put that huge concrete pavlova there? <laughs> oh, that's the Opera House. The Opera House, eh? Jeez, that went up overnight. <laughs> oh, uh, this is uh, Clary Vernon. Phil. Oh, hello. I'm Thelma Bullpit because he married me. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Missus. Uh, look, I'll leave you to it, so... Uh, oh, nice meeting you, Mr Vernon. Ta-da, Ted. Craig. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, oh, sit down, Clary. <laughs> oh, would you like a beer? Uh, no, thanks, Mrs. I can't stop. I left Doris at the pub in Dubbo. Oh, Doris is your wife? <coughs> sort of. She's a mule. <laughs> oh, well, as long as you're happy, that's the main thing. <laughs> I think I'll make a cup of tea. Oh, gosh, Clary, I still haven't got over the shock of old Jack going. It was a sad loss. How much? What? 
How much did he leave us? Oh, I don't know. He was a pretty good prospector, but the sherry sort of flowed like water when Jack Bullpit was in town. Uh, what did he leave us? Well, I don't know. It's all locked up in the box. Apparently, he left you a couple of keys a few years ago. He sent them to you. A couple? I only got one. Yeah, that's right. The other one went to your brother. Uh, Bob, is it? Tickle me, grandmother. Well, I can't sit here talking me life away. Doris gets stroppy if she doesn't get fed a couple of days, you know. And just a minute, just a minute. Where is the box? I left it on the porch. Oh. It's bloody heavy. I'd better give you a hand. No, 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 no. You, you've done your bit, Clary. Uh, uh, just uh, I'll look after that. Thelma! <laughs> Look at the time. Where are they? Oh, relax, Ted. They said they'd be here as soon as they could. Pickle me, Grandmother. They're here. Uh, open the door, Phil. Well, why don't you open it? You're closest. You mad woman. Bob will rush straight in and steal me chair. You open the door. Hi, hi, everybody. Here comes the party. That'll be Bob. Shut up, Bob. That'll be Merle. Hello, world. Yes, oh. it's me, Bobby Bullpit. Don't swoon, I'm human. If you're human, how come you keep the lawn down with your teeth? Just one more, Merle, and I'll be getting that surgeon back to, to drop your chins. Shut up, Bob. Sorry we're late, Thelma, but I had trouble untethering Bob from the hill's hoist. <laughs> oh, Merle, Bob, you're so funny the way you pretend to hate each other. <laughs> I don't hate him, Thelma. I love Bob as much as I can love any goat. <laughs> there go the chins, Merle. Thelma, my throbbing little temptress of wombat crescent. Why didn't you wait for me? Just think what I could have given you. What? What he gave me, Thelma. A drinking problem. <laughs> Teddy boy! Get away from me, I don't trust you. <laughs> but, Teddy, I'm your brother. You love me. Why don't I hate you? Hate, hate, vomit. <laughs> is that the box? Yes, that's the one. Jeez, it's heavy. Is it? It certainly is. Who's this Clary bloke? Oh, he's an old friend of Uncle Jack's. He's a strange man, Bob. He says his wife looks like a mule. <laughs> I know just how he feels. <laughs> Let's get it open so you can all go home. All right, all right, all right. Now, just remember, Ted, if there's no will in there, we split the contents right down the middle. 70-50, OK? Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Let's get rid of all this talking, Glomp. Come on, let's get it open. Isn't it exciting, Merle? Not really, Thelma. It's most probably full of rural underwear. <laughs> I think it's time for a drink. Nobody leaves the room. The box is open. Oh, it's true. Look. It's a will! I'll read it. No, no, you can't. You're a Datsunil. You only read Japanese. I'll read it. <laughs> Come on, Teddy. Well, it'll take hours by the time you run your finger along the lines. Watch it, mate. Oh, Ted, Bob, no squabbling. I'll come and sit down, both of you. I'll read it. Ah. <coughs> I, Jack Francis Bullpit, being of sound mind and body, apart from where Doris kicked me. <laughs> oh, oh, Clary's wife gets stranger and Just stranger. Just read it, woman. Do hereby bequeath the following. To Thelma Bullpit, I leave my pocket watch, which mysteriously stopped on your wedding day. Oh, oh thank you, Uncle Jack. I always thought you Get on with it, young. woman. What do I get, Phil? Oh, to Merle Bullpit, oh. I leave my profound sympathy and my hip mask. Bad luck, Merle. It's empty. <laughs> I thought you said he was rich. Of course he's rich, and I'm getting all of it. Go on, Phil, go on. To Robert Moncrief Bullpit, who in 1958 sold me a ute with a diff full of porridge, I leave my old violin. Oh, ripper! Ah, oh, oh, I'll paint it purple and nail it over the bar at home. Ah, oh, see? He got you back. You thought you were getting a gold mine, but you didn't. I'm getting it. Ah, go on, Phil, go on, go on. To Edward Melba Bullpit, my favourite nephew, I leave something I stumbled across in my wanders and have kept for you all these years. Oh, I'm rich. What is it? What is it? A pair of old boots! Good <laughs> day, Mrs B. Oh, Bruno, cooey Bruno. <laughs> G'day, Mel, how are you? Fine, thank you, Bruno. You're looking uh, well. Uh, oh. Yeah, good. 
<laughs> uh, I fixed your blender, Mrs. B. Thank you, Bruno. How much do I owe you? Forget it. Just one thing. Why did you put a sock in it? <laughs> I didn't. Ted did, because the spin dryer broke. <laughs> that was. Where is old Grumble Bum anyway? In the lounge room, having a nice time ignoring Bob. Oh. Oh. So the bloke who owns this dog, he says... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he says, it's not my attitude, it's your attitude. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Hello, Bob, how are you? Good day, Bruno. How's the family? Oh, uh, she's well, and yesterday the canary said dada. <laughs> Good boy. Pretty soon you're going to need to trade up. How are you fixed for wheels? Oh, yeah, fine, thanks, Bob. G'day, Tettles. Yeah. What about one of Ted's beers? Uh, leave, leave the, the money, money on, on the, the fridge. fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get one for me. I've got to go. What's all this junk? Oh, it's all the stuff Uncle Jack left us. What, a pair of old boots and a fiddle? Where's the gold mine? Very funny, Mr Smarty Sardine Sucker. <laughs> Don't you come over here gloating through your flashy gold teeth? Hey, just a minute. You didn't even inherit his boots. See? It's got E.K. written inside it. Who's E.K.? I don't know. Probably P.K.'s brother. <laughs> Jeez, this is nice. Looks old. Oh, beautifully made. Hey, it's a Stradivarius. Bull, it's a violin. <laughs> a Stradivarius is a very rare violin. It's worth a lot of money. Hey, How much? Oh, I don't know. 20, 30, maybe even 100. Dollars? Grand. A hundred grand? Pickle me grandmother, I'm... He's... I'm almost rich. <laughs> we better tell the others. No, no, are you mad? No, no, it might not be true. And besides, we wouldn't want to get them all hepped up about it, would we? Well, yeah, I suppose you're right. Uh, of course I'm right. I'll, I'll, I'll get it valued tomorrow. Good idea. <laughs> yeah, of course it's a good idea. Now, now, rack off. Go on. Oh, hang on. Go <laughs> on, oh, no, your dinner will get cold. I'm having salad. All right, it'll get hot then. Now, go on, I'll say goodbye to everybody for you. Goodbye for him. See you. Go on. There's something terribly wrong with you, Mr. Bullpit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the very sick man. Get out. <laughs> Pushy wog. <laughs> now, before you say anything, Teddy, I'll left two bucks on top of the fridge. Real money, not even a cheque or a written trade-in offer. Bob, you didn't need to. You're my brother. I love you. Love, love, adore. <laughs> adore? What happened to vomit, hate and lie? <laughs> Just a joke, you know me. Old Gigglebum Grumblebum. <laughs> Are you feeling all right, Teddy? Oh, I'm all right. I'm so all right. I'm prepared to take the shabby old useless violin right off your hands. What for? I want to paint it purple and, and nail it over me bar. Sweet, you can't do that because I uh, collect violins. <laughs> Since when? Since now. Besides, I play the violin. A oh, bull. No, no, listen, listen, listen. That's a bit of Beethoven's fifth. <laughs> Which bit? One of the middle bits, about number three. Now, go on, go on. I'll trade you uh, these old boots for the violin. You don't want a silly old violin. Well, what do I want them for? Uh, well, to paint them purple and stick them over your bar. I've already got some there. Well, you get another pair. Oh, no, I don't want them. Of course you do. What for? Well, when you're in your car yard, when you're going to make an offer to look poor and just for, you know, like kicking customers when they come in for a warranty claim. <laughs> No, Teddy, I don't want them. Oh, look, look, I tell you what, the boots plus 500 bucks. No checks. No, 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 no. Cash, cash on the hand, cash on the hand. No, no, no checks. Look, they're not worth it, but you're my brother and I wouldn't want to rob you. Well, uh, <laughs> seeing that you want it so much, uh, all right, it's a deal. Right, let's shake on it. All right. Ha-ha! <laughs> gotcha, gotcha! I'm rich and you're poor and I'm the king of the castle. <laughs> What are you going on about, Ted? Oh, I've waited to get you for years. <laughs> laugh, laugh. I'm going to laugh forever. That violin's worth a hundred grand. <laughs> look at it, look on your face. <laughs> it will be grandmother. I'm poor again. It's ruined, Phil. Perhaps if you got some aerodite? <laughs> Not worth a cracker. Mm, doesn't look much for $500, Ted. I don't want to talk about it. You haven't even got the boots. 
Oh, gosh, that doorbell's up late, Ted. Better open the door. Come in! Oh, I'm sorry to bother you so late, missus. Oh, Clary, what are you doing back here? And what about poor Doris? Oh, she'll be all right. As long as somebody shovels out her shed. <laughs> as long as she's happy, that's the main thing. Can I have a word with Ted? Oh, come in, Cla Ted. Clary Vernon's here. Good day, Clary. S sit down, Clary. Good. What happened to the violin? I don't know. It broke somehow. <laughs> Jeez, I'm glad old Jack can't see that. He spent weeks making that violin. <laughs> he made it. I thought it was a Stradivarius. Huh, you fell for it too. You and a thousand pawn shop blokes. The times that Jack hocked that. <laughs> so, so it's worthless? Oh, yeah, but that's not why I'm here. I found a letter amongst Jack's things. It's, uh, it's addressed to you. I thought you should have it. You better read it, Phil. Dear Ted, by now that shyster Bob has been arrested for trying to flog a fake Stradivarius. Serves him right for the ute. If you look inside the boots I left you, you'll see the initials EK. They stand for Edward Kelly, the famous bush ranger. <laughs> Tickle me, grandmother, I've given away Ned Kelly's boots! <laughs>